Velvet worms have been around for 500 million years, even before dinosaurs were here. When you look at these worms moving so slow, you don't think that they are even able to attack, but they are fierce little giants. When velvet worms hunt, they detect a prey, they shoot very viscous slime that traps its prey. They can capture prey that is a few inches away, up to a couple of feet away. And all that happens in a fraction of a second. That is an adaptation that is unique in nature. The worm has flexible tubes called the oral papilla. The oral papilla, when it squirts, it will oscillate and will cover a large area. I did my PhD in mathematical physics, which is completely different to what I'm doing now. And I was looking into a problem in which I analyze mathematical instabilities when a fluid is going pretty fast through a flexible pipe. I realized that there might be an animal that takes advantage of this mechanism. Velvet worms are the biological realization of a mechanism that oscillates. And I wanted to know what is going to happen with this motion when you miniaturize the hose. So that's the reason why I'm studying these worms. We are in Chilean Patagonia. The geography is glaciers, volcanoes, and in the valleys you will find this rainforest. It is a rainy place. Everywhere is plenty of mist and humidity. And you have plenty of logs to search for worms. The good places to search for worms are like under the moss. They are nocturnal, so during the day they will hide in the darkest possible place. They are so rare that if you miss one, you will be looking for hours. For sure we have a velvet one right here. You see the skin, the antennas, it is a velvet worm. We set up two high-speed cameras at different angles. Okay. That's perfect, that's perfect. So if you, if you tease him a little bit, it would be great. Look at that, look at yeah. that, look at the squirt. Look, there's the worm squirting, super fast, 10 milliseconds. The information I can extract from the high-speed videos is how fast the oral papilla oscillates. It's between 30 to 60 oscillations per second. It's impossible to see by naked eye. From a physicist's point of view, what theory tells you is that these oscillations at this microscopic scale is impossible. There is a, a physical instability called the garden hose instability. So when you crank up the water in a garden hose, it starts dancing with a random motion in a big flexible pipe, you see turbulence. And that is what makes oscillations, is this fluid moving around, forming vortices. In the case of the worm, you don't have that mechanism because you don't have turbulence. So I wanted to know what is the seed for the instability, the force that produces the oscillations at a micro scale. When you go into the microscopic world, liquids behave in a different way. There is a new mechanism making the papillae, this little flexible tube, unstable. So how that happens? We have several hypotheses, but we believe that a friction between layers, between the fluid and the structure, 
is what produces the instability in this case. And that is completely new. Yes. Is it in focus? Yes. Yes, it is. So we will go. Mm -hmm. And now we're going back to the physical system, trying to mimic the motion of this papilla. That's it. We are filming here the prototype of a synthetic nozzle. We make water go through it. And as you push harder, this nozzle is going to start moving. So when we look at the video, what we are Washing is the beginning of this self-driving oscillation. Nice. But now we are trying to miniaturize this mechanism. Why? Because we have observed in the videos that you can form very, very tiny drops. Yes. Um, look at the little drops there. Essentially, you have a, a, a jet of liquid, and when we make it oscillate, you somehow cut the fluid jet and produce more and more drops. We realized that this could have some potential applications. Everybody's looking into a new ways to encapsulate drugs, to produce one drop inside another drop, to make emulsions, for example. If you want to do that, you have to be able to find a mechanism to fast produce drops. So you can do that mimicking the worm mechanism. The most exciting thing was when I saw this mechanism work for the first time. You say, wow, physics is doing something there and it's interacting with biology and allows this worm to prevail. Just from observing them, some little chubby worms, from quantifying what they do, you could get new technology. <laughs> 